Crafty Review here. Um, we're going to get a quick review in. We're going to actually head out to a couple of breweries tonight. But uh, we selected a beer uh, from Clown Shoes. And these guys are out of uh, Ipswich, Massachusetts. And uh, along with a pretty face and a smile, we figured the next best characteristic we look for in a woman is the tramp stamp. <laughs> This is, a, this is a Belgian IPA. It's 7% ABV and 60 on the IBU. Uh, reading up on a little bit on the brewery, apparently the, the guy uh, entered a contest to ring beer. Apparently didn't do very well. <laughs> so he kind of got upset. He's like, you know, he's pretty determined uh, to make a good beer. So with just a couple of batches, he's actually got a, a big following with him. Nice. Uh, and uh, lo and behold, you know, here he is making beer. and. Uh, I mean, you go on their website, they got their staples, they got a bunch of retired beers, obviously, mm -hmm. they've been doing really well for themselves. That's what happens usually with, with beers, I mean, a home brewer knows that you never get the same two batches, right? So, you experiment with something a little bit different, you know, have people try it out, probably fails miserably, <laughs> but, but then you kind of learn, alright, well, maybe if I add this or boil it uh, for a little bit longer with this or that. And Sounds like you know you, you know more about the brewery and the beer than I do, but right. that sounds pretty typical for craft. You know, you just you start off with something that might not be all that great. Next thing you know, make a couple of tweaks and all good stuff. That's just the that's the, the beauty of making yeah. beers that you're always tweaking. Um, sometimes a brewer is don't know when to say when, <laughs> yeah. don't know when just to leave it alone because yeah. they always want to improve their craft. Um, they have a few hops uh, in here: the Columbus, the Armorello, and the Centennial. Pretty pretty common so yeah. we'll crack into this uh, let you know what we think one thing I didn't know if you pointed out but it is a Belgian IPA Belgian which, IPA yep so kind of goes what I was saying with making some little tweaks here and there what I love seeing and I guess it's the next kind of step the next evolution of beer is taking a more traditional style and adding another style to it like you got a Belgian style beer which is typically going to be more of like a wheat based or a lighter flavored beer mixed with an IPA you and I love that are going to have more of that strong hot bitterness. Right. You mix the two together, you know, you're going to get probably a lighter flavor up front, and then with some of that hoppiness on the back end, you know. So I, I love seeing combos like that, like Belgian IPAs. Sometimes we see like extreme pale ales that are just about IPAs, double IPAs, triples. I, I love those styles where it's just a twist on. It. And, and anytime I see Belgian IPA, for some reason I just think of a creamy hoppy goodness. Yep. Because it, it is a little, it's got a little bit more body to it because it is the Belgian style. But I love the hops also with it. For me, it's a win-win. Um, there are only a few that I really have tasted that I didn't care for, but all of them seem to be pretty awesome in my opinion. I'm saving that one for you in case you like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so given the color on it, as you can see, it, it does have a little bit more body to it, so it fits the Belgian style as yeah. far as the color goes. It's going to be hazy because of the wheat yep. that's in there, but then that dark color probably uses a little bit of the malt, uh, hop, or malt associated with the, the IPA. And, and, the and I wish it would have gave it a little bit more information as far as what I can find on the malts. Um, they're definitely there. Yeah, I, I, you, you, like I was saying, you get that IPA smell to it. So with uh, IPAs, like we've always been preaching, you're going to get that bitterness, you're going to get that uh, you know, floral, piney smell right off the bat. Uh, I'm curious to see that taste. Well, it, I think it marries well with, it does have like an, an orange pill scent to it. Yep. And to coincide with some of the, uh, the tropical notes that you're going to get, the citrus notes from the hops. So, good stuff. It's really good stuff. Yeah, right off the front, you can taste that orange. You can taste that bit of orange that's on there. Um, not an overbearing IPA, which being on a 60 IBU, you know, you're kind of on the bubble there a little bit of kind of middle of the road being a little bit too right. bitter, a little bit light, but um, I didn't think that came off as a 60 IBU at, at all. I, you know, I thought it was pretty refreshing, but because of that IPA, attachment to it you can see the hops that are there so you feel a little bit of that bitterness but it's not overbearing no i you know? actually think it's really well balanced for what, what it's saying it is you get some of the the malts and some of the wheat mm -hmm. tendencies but then you get the hop finish yep and the all around flavor is awesome man. I, yeah I, I really i really well again this is new to me uh, graphics again caught my eye and Obviously, the tramp stamp <laughs> always catches your eye. Always catches your eye. Some of them are. Some of them you don't want to catch your eye. Catch your eye. It's like a bullseye. Exactly. Uh, scale of one to five. What do you want to give it? Uh, 
um, you know, I'm going to give it a four. You know, I, I, I'm not, I love IPAs, um, as I said many a times, and I love twists on IPAs. Um, I'm not, you know, not a huge Belgian fan, um, but it has a clean flavor to it. It has a good uh, hop flavor to it. Um, so, you know, it's not not bad by any means. So I'm going to give it a pretty good score there. I'm going to give it, uh, I'll give it a four and a quarter. I think I might like it just a hair more than you. Um, it's very, very refreshing, very crisp, like great described. I love the hops. I love the, the citrus to it. Um, this, this could be... This could be an all-night beer or even an all-day yep. beer. It's it's not heavy like some IPAs would be because yep. it has got that crisp finish to it. Yep. And it's got that uh, orange peel and that, that uh, citrus to it too. And it's got a little bit of that dangerous 7%. <laughs> so exactly. it, it does come off refreshing at first and then you get a little bit of that hoppiness, that bitterness. Right. Not enough where you're like, oh, I only need one or two of these and I'm done. No, it's actually pretty refreshing where it'd be easy to kick back a six pack of it, or but water. at 7%, don't know if you'll remember you drank don't all know, six, but don't, don't know what's going to happen when you stand up after <laughs> yeah. six. You might actually wake up, next thing you know, you got a tramp stand. Hey, that's, that's not, <laughs> just have a couple, all right? Uh, would you tap this beer? I would. That's a good beer. I wish, you know, it's starting to get, well, Arizona cold. So me, born and raised in Arizona, to me, cold is 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm starting to look for more full body beers. You right. can you kick back around a fire. You know, I think next time we get our summertime rolling around, I'd pick up a six pack of it, pick up a keg of it, and nice. And, and I've it seen off. it. I've seen it in the stores actually for quite a while, so I don't think it's a seasonal. That's something yep. that you can pick up, you know, anytime. Uh, I tap the shit out of this. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, clown shoes, <laughs> great job out of uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> Some ch get, don't forget to try the lobster. Don't forget to try the lobster. <laughs> the wicked hot chow. <laughs> Hey, uh, Craft Review Beer here. Don't, uh, don't forget to follow us on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, don't forget your growler. And uh, Gabe and Londo, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>